Hello students, uh, today I have prepared a video on a topic called as subnetting and supernetting in IP addressing. Now, what do you mean by subnetting? From the name itself, subnetworks. Subnetworks means to divide large networks into small networks using subnet masks. What do you mean by supernetting? Supernetting means combining small networks into large network. So basically, subnetting and supernetting are complementary to each other. How? Subnetting is to divide large network into small networks and supernetting is to combine small networks into a large network. So in this video lecture, we will try to understand what you mean by supernetting and subnetting. IP address are designed with two levels of hierarchy and we know very well what are they. The first part is network ID and the other part is host ID. So this is something without subnetting. When we talk about subnetting, here some part of the host ID will become the subnetwork ID and the subnetwork ID depends upon how many subnetworks we need. We will try to understand in detail when we are going to see a problem based on it. But here, please remember in subnetting, some part of the host ID will become the subnet ID. Next, talking about what do you mean by default subnet mask and what do you mean by subnet mask. So, these two things are different. One should not get confused with default mask and the subnet mask. Default mask is nothing but founded from the class of the IP address. For example, for this IP address 141, if we look at the first byte of the IP address, it belongs to class B IP address. It belongs to the class B IP address. So the default subnet mask so default mask is 255.255.0.0. But here, if you want to make a subnetting, this default mask will change into subnet mask, where this host ID will change as per the how many subnet networks are being needed. Now we'll try to calculate what we mean by subnet address. But before that, we'll have some shortcut method to do that. If the byte is mask is 255, copy the byte in the address. If the byte in the mask is 0, replace the byte in the address with 0. If the byte in the mask is neither 255 nor 0, we write the mask and the address is binary and apply the AND operation. So, we will try to understand all these three steps with an example. So, what is the subnet sub network address if the destination address is 19.30.80.5 and the mask is 255.255.192.0. So they are trying to ask you what is the subnet network address given the destination IP address and the mask. So here we will first write down the IP address and the mask and how to calculate the subnetwork address here it goes. So first step if the mask is 255 here if you remember this st first step what is the first step if the mask is 255 copy the IP address. If the mask is 0, copy 0. If it is not 255 or 0, convert it into binary and do the AND operation. So, we will use these three steps. 
to solve this sum. So, since the mask is 250 pi, we have just copied the IP address. Again, the mask is 250 pi, we have copied the IP address. Here in this part, the mask is 0, we have copied the 0. But over here, the mask is neither 250 pi nor it is 0. So, here we are going to do the first binary operation. So, here what is the binary of 84? We have noted over here. What is the binary of 192? We have noted over here. And then we have done the AND operation and we get the value as 64. So, here we have written the 64. So, it is very simple. If it is 255, copy the IP address. If it is 0, copy 0. If it is neither 255 nor 0, convert both into binary and do the AND operation. <coughs> so, here basically default mask is nothing but depending upon the class of the IP address. So, let us say if it is class B. So, this is a default subnet mask. What in by subnet mask? Default mask and subnet mask are different because in subnet mask, some part of the host ID turns out into subnetwork ID. And how many bits we have to borrow from the host ID, which will be become subnetwork ID, it all depends upon how many networks we have to divide. That means if we want 8 networks, if we want to divide a network into 8 parts, so 3 bits we are going to take. How 3 bits? Because 2 raised to 3, which turns out to be 8. Let's say if you want to divide a network into 4 parts. So, how many bits we are going to consider? 2 bits because 2 raised to 4 is 4. If you want to divide a network into 16, how many bits we are going to borrow? 4 because 2 raised to 14 is 16. So, that's the reason the number of sub subnets must be power of 2. So, we will try to understand with the help of example. A company is granted the site address as 201.70.64.0, which is class C IP address. The company needs six, six sub networks. Design the subnet. So, the first step is to identify which class the IP address belongs to. So, as it belongs to class C, one should remember for class C, how many network ID are there? Three bytes are for network ID. So, if there are 3 bytes for the network ID, how many number of ones are there for network ID? 24 number of ones. So, here if you remember, so here 24 bits of ones are nothing but the underlying part over here till here is nothing but for network ID. Now, next part is how many bits of ones you have to borrow from the host ID. So, here if you see, they have borrow, borrowed 3 bits from the host ID. Now, why 3 bits from the host ID? These 24 bits are network ID by default and 3 bits are become network ID which means 3 bits are borrowed from the host ID. Now, why 3 bits? You will understand from here. Since the company needs 6 subnetworks, it is not a power of 2 which means 2 raised to 2, 4, 2 raised to 3, 8. So, it lies between 4 and 8. So, it is obvious that we are not going to consider 2, we have to consider 3 because 2 raised to 3, 8, right? So, 6 is below 8. So, yeah, that is the reason we have borrowed 3 bits. We have borrowed 3 bits. Why 3 bits? Because 2 raised to 3, 8 and we need 6 subnets. Is it clear? So, we have borrowed 3 bits of the host ID. The 24 by default. 3 we have borrowed. So, how many numbers we have turned into? 27. So, here if you see how many number of ones are there? Yes, 27. How 27? 24 by default and 3 we have borrowed. So, this 27 bits turns out to be network ID. Now, how many bits are left for the host? Total length of the IP address is? Yes, 32. So, 32 minus 27 which turns out to be 5. So, 5 bits are left for the host. Yes or no? 5 bits are left for the host. So, how many hosts are possible in that network? 2 raised to 5. By 5, we 
because how many clicks are left for the host? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 2 raised to 5? Yes, 32. Which means within a network, 32 hosts would be there. So we'll try to understand with the help of this example. Uh, this IP address, the range of IP address. So how many subnets they need? 6. But here we can get 8 subnets. Why 8? Because we have taken 3 bits. So here comes first subnet, second subnet and 8. So one network is being divided into, yes, 8 subnetworks. Now here we have written the network ID as it is, which is given in the question. Yes, 201.70.64, which we have written as it is. And then we have given 32. 32 hosts in a network, so 0 to 31, which, are, which turns out to be 32, 0 to 31, yes, 32, likewise, it will go on, yes, next subnet will have 32 to 63, having 32 hosts within a network, why add 1, because here, they have started from 0, that's the reason not have 32, I hope you have getting this thing, right, just to quickly, Go into the uh, yes, the next sum. So here they have given the next IP address which is belongs to class B IP address. So whenever we talk about class B, how many network ID would be there? Yes, 16 bits. Now how many subnetworks they need? The company needs thousand subnetworks. So thousand means how many bits we have we need to borrow? Yes, two raised to ten. 1024 that means we are going to borrow 10 bits from the host time so 16 by default for class b and we are going to borrow 10 bits from the host id so how many bits are left for the host id yes 32 minus 26 which turns out to be 6 so here comes 10 bits which are borrowed for the host id yes 16 by default so we have borrowed 10 and how many uh, hosts within a uh, each network 64 why 64 because here 6 bits are left for the host so 2 raised to 6 it turns out to be yes 64 so here if you observe in each network how many sub networks will be formed 1 2 1 0 2 4 why 1 2 1 0 2 4 because we have borrowed 10 bits from the yes network ID and how many hosts within a network yes 64 why 64 because there are 6, six bits so 2 raised to 6 64 so here if you look in each network you will find 64 hosts yes only now what is the difference between subnetting and supernetting as I told you in subnet we we are borrowing some bits from the host ID that means we are dividing a large network into small networks. While if you look in sub super netting, what is happening? We are reducing the network ID bits. So here we are reducing the network ID bits by yes, giving three bits to the host ID. Yes, on so this three bits turns out to be host ID. So here in super netting, super netting, what we are doing? We are giving bits to the host ID while in subnetting what we are doing we are borrowing some bits from the host ID yes or no so subnet mask that is super networking is to divide a large network into subnetworks while super netting is nothing to combine small networks into big network that is 8 network to 1 network now you may be thinking why 8 over here why because we are talking about 3 bits yes or no so 2 raised to 3 which turns out to be 8. Yes or no. So that's the reason they are saying 1 divide 1 network into a subnet since we have borrowed 3. So here 8 network will be converted into 1 super network. If you want to uh, instead of 8 if you want to make it as 16. So if you are saying 16 what changes will be done over here. Instead of 3 it will turn out to be yes 4. With this I am ending this lecture on a topic called as subnetting and supernetting. Thank you.